Hello there, Hidden Hermit, and uh, welcome to my introduction to Tarot and the Astrology. I'm going to be making 12 wee videos about the um, Zodiac Sun signs and their relation to the Tarot. It's going to be amazing, I swear. Now there's a couple of reasons why I'm doing this. Uh, let me explain them to you right now. The first one is, is this, the, the Rider Waite Smith deck. I hate that term, Rider Waite. I prefer to call it the Waite Smith. But anyway, so the Waite Smith. Now, before the Waite Smith was published in 1909, the majority of tarot decks had the Major Arcana as we know them, more or less, and the pip cards that were just numbered, you know, there were like seven cups for the seven of cups. Uh, there were three rods for the seven of wands, etc. And until Mr. Waite and Miss Coleman Smith came along, um, everything was kind of dull. They all had their meanings and everything, but the Waite Smith deck gave them pictorial representations. Now, the pictures themselves are actually informed by the astrological elements associated with those cards. Those party animals in the Hermetic Order of the Golden Dawn, of which Arthur Waite and Pamela Coleman Smith were members of, uh, came up with a very neat system of the tarot corresponds to astrology and most of the decks that we use today are based on this pictorial representation so I think it's um, not necessarily important but it's very very interesting it's also kind of fun do you as a tarot need, uh, need to know it well not really no um, but it is it is like I say it's kind of fun so I mean if I was just to look through this uh, the stars come up now the uh, the major arcana in the decks for you know five six hundred years or however long the Torah has been going for have always contained the sun the moon and the star so you've always had that sort of astrological interest um, even if it's just a kind of a minor association at that point or what we think could be minor but they've always been the the sun the star and the moon in the major arcana so it's always been there to a certain extent if we look at the two of pentacles here Back in the olden days, that it would just be two discs. But we have this picture now that we're all quite familiar with. This picture is very similar in most Whitesmith systems, if you like. And the Two of Pentacles suggests Jupiter in Capricorn. How do I know this? Well, I just know. Um, but the picture it kind of represents that association with Jupiter and Capricorn. Um, if we were to look at, um, do we want to do it? Yeah, we'll do another pentacle, I suppose. So if we look at the Eight of Pentacles, this is the Sun in Virgo. And again, once I get into the respective videos, I'm going to do 12 videos, one for Aries, one for Taurus, one for Gemini, etc, etc, etc. I will be explaining these associations. Look at what's up with all the pentacles? What are you trying to say to me, Pixie? Say hi, Pixie. Oh, Pixie's grumpy today, clearly. But the Five of Cups... The Five of Cups is Mars in Scorpio. Now, Mars and Scorpio, it's a pretty harsh sort of association, really, which is why you get the Five of Cups, sort of the disappointment, if you like. So, yeah, that's the first reason why I'm doing this, and, and the main reason, to be perfectly honest. Excuse me. <coughs> the second reason is um, I find astrology kind of fun and interesting, and the reason why I find it fun and interesting is probably because of my um, history studying astronomy. Uh, and the, the more I think about astronomy, the more I think about astrology, I, the two marry up so well and I just find it incredibly fascinating. So I'm going to give you a very, very quick, this is the most basic astronomy 101, astrology 101. Um, astronomy is kind of easier, to be honest. <laughs> so... The zodiac is divided into 12 parts. They're the 12 sun signs which you might be familiar with. Here is a sun. <laughs> I swear, that's the sun. The astrological year starts over here at 0 degrees Aries, or the vernal equinox, which is usually March the 20th. Sometimes it's March the 21st, depending on what book you're reading. But it's when the equinox is. The equinox is when the sun is in the sky for equal amounts there's an equal amount of light and dark, basically. Now, if we pretend that this is Earth, because hematite rings count for Earth, obviously, 
and we're over here the say we've got Aries here and I'm talking about Aries because it is the 9th of April today so the, the Sun is in Aries uh, and well yeah we've got this red thing down as well so why not so we're looking the earth is here the Sun is here so the, the constellation behind the Sun is Aries and that's what we mean when we say the Sun is in Aries now the actual truth is this is what we call the tropical zodiac so everything the whole year is divided into 12 parts which is roughly 30.4 days per sign which is nice and equal also uh, the whole 360 degrees is also divided into 36 but I'll come to that a little bit later it'll come more apparent and obvious um, if I was to move over here if Earth's gone around a month and now the Sun is in front of the constellation of Taurus so that's what we mean when we when we say the sun is in this in this sign. It's just in front of it, if you like. And astrology in its it's a vast subject. It's so vast. It's so deep. And I'm only going to touch upon really lightly touch upon the parts that relate to tarot. Uh, but astrology will also take into account. Look here is his Saturn over here, and the relationship between the, the what signs aware like the moon's over here for example and astrology is it's, it's mind-bogglingly amazing um as is tarot to a certain extent but what i'm doing here is just looking at the links another month has gone past and now the sun is in front of gemini 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 do you like my dice by the way they're awesome aren't they <laughs> have i um, is my thumb on gemini i have totally lost gemini there you are etc etc now the moon is over here in Virgo and now let's just say why am I losing everything here you go here's Mars Mars is now in Pisces so that's astrology for you um yeah I think astrology is a great representation of some of the patterns you see in nature so nature and when i say nature i don't just mean green stuff that grows on trees i mean the whole sort of existence of reality the cosmos in itself i think is a very big part of nature now if you were to look at the 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 way galaxies dance around each other on a on a massive scale we're talking scales of billions of light years um, and then look down right into the very minute at, quantum mechanics and things like quantum superposition the thing that everything has in common is there are patterns now if i remember i'm going to stick a link to a lovely little youtube video that shows the earth traveling no it shows the sun traveling around the solar system and it depicts the planets going around them and what it looks like and if you look at it long enough and and you do because it is kind of hypnotic uh, you, you you see these patterns and the planets are going the planets are going around the sun we're going around the sun the planets are always exerting their influence on us i think um, a, a lot of people are not into astrology because well i don't know this is kind of harsh but are they ignorant or is it narcissism i mean to acknowledge that these patterns happen in nature at the the macrocosmic scale and at the microcosmic scale but patterns don't happen to you you know on a psychological scale i think i think is ignorant naive narcissistic i don't know there's definitely something there i believe so yeah the two reasons right away smith let's do another one there is the two of cups we all love the two of cups it's amazing and the two of cups is venus venus in gemini yeah no venus in cancer excuse me excuse me beautiful anyway so a goodbye son we'll see the dice later uh, actually you know the hematite ring is actually a pretty good representation for earth because the hematite is very heavy and earthy I don't know why but you know I just came up with that there are a few visual aids to this video as well I have been thinking about this a little bit but you know me I'm gonna mess it all up <laughs> so in terms of correspondences and links between the tarot and astrology the most obvious one i think well i think the most obvious one because it's obvious are namely the first suits so you've got your wands your cups your swords your pentacles and in tarot we we know that these um relate to the will and creativity amongst other things emotions and love relationships amongst other things mental matters logic and reason 
amongst other things. And finally, uh, earth, health, wealth, tangible, real things. And it's exactly the same with the four, the four are chemical elements of the of the astrological year. So wands is fire, and we already know this. We we, we know this, and the correspondences, the influences, uh, everything is exactly the same. It's exactly the same. So swords are air. Water is cups, and there's there's the earthy. So. If you've never heard of astrology before, but you're a little bit familiar with tarot, you've already nailed um, almost 40 of the cards. <laughs> if it's the other way around, that you know a little bit about astrology and you want to look into tarot a little bit, then you already know the common associations with, with 40 out of the 78 cards. So, well done. Good job. Give yourself a pat on the back. Um, so next up, we've the... Astrological year, it's divided into 12. If you divide those 12 into three, into four, sorry, my maths is actually amazing. I'm, you know me, I'm not very good at making these videos just yet. <laughs> so, yeah, I'm gonna leave those there. So the, the, 12, the 12 signs of the zodiac, the 12 constellations that the sun will pass through. And as I was meant, I was meant to say this earlier, but that, the sun passes through passing through these constellations is not actually true um, and it never has been and a lot of naysayers to the to the horoscope will say oh but you know that the sun doesn't actually pass through this sign or there's a 13th sign to the zodiac and they're kind of missing the point um, for a start let's let's get earth and the sun back shall we for a start so the earth's over here oh, my dice my dice um, what was I saying? Oh yeah, so it's divided very neatly into 12, 30.4 days per sign. And the reality is that doesn't quite happen. Uh, the naysayers will say, well, you know, obviously this is a load of old rubbish then. Once upon a time they did, but now they don't. So it's all changed and it's all nonsense. Well, they're, they're missing the point. They're totally missing the point. For a start, the, the sun never spent 30.4 days in any sign in any one year. I mean, if it did, what would that say about us? What would that say about our place in the universe, our geographical place in the universe, the nature of a conscious God, or all those sorts of things, if that was actually the case? Um, also, there are some signs that are really greedy, like Virgo and Leo, for example, because they're huge. They take up more of the sky, so the sun takes longer to pass through them. Whereas Aries is really teeny tiny and piddly, so... I believe it's I believe it's a Virgo or Libra where the sun stays in that sign for 45 days, whereas Aries and Scorpio, in particular, the, the sun's in it for like 10 days. But again, you're missing the point. The point is, um, ancient astrologers managed to divide these patterns that I'm talking about into these nice, the the alchemical elements, uh, all these attributes really neatly and. It's interesting to wonder how they came up with them. I like to think, and this is just me speculating, I like to think that they backward engineered a quite a lot of these things. For example, old, good, old King Johnny, whatever his name was, whatever Sumerian or Babylonian name is, he, he was a bit grumpy but nice, and they were able to put these attributes together. Who knows? I don't know. Thing is, as a pattern, as a system, it does work. I think it does work. Anyway, so sorry for going backwards. Um, I've actually got notes for this video, but of course I'm not looking at them. <laughs> so let's go back to the tarot. We've got our four, got our four suits and our four alchemical elements. Let's talk about the uh, the division of the zodiac into its twelve signs. And you're going to hear of these. Most of you are going to know what your sun sign is, meaning what sign was behind the sun when you were born the three fire signs are aries and then um, don't you just love these cards this is the uh, barbary zodiac oriole oracle i don't use oracle cards but i saw these on instagram thanks to the intuitive priestess and i thought oh yeah they'll make good props there you go so anyway the fire signs the three fire signs are aries where the year starts leo sagittarius i love that card The uh, the water signs are Cancer, the Crab, Scorpio, and Pisces. 
These are the air signs. Gemini. Libra. Aquarius. And finally the earth signs. Taurus. Virgo. And Capricorn. Now I'm glad Capricorn came up last. If you want to have a good close look at Capricorn. You're thinking, well, hopefully you're thinking, well, he looks a bit devilish. Now, the major arcana symbol that associated with Capricorn is indeed the devil. So already you can see one of those, one of those links, if you like. I would pull the de devil out, but I don't have him ready. So, so yeah, so that's the zodiac and indeed the tarot. The tarot deck divided into four, the pips and the court cards. This is the Zodiac divided into four and into 12. Moving on, I'm going to grab one of my visual aids. Right now, I'd like you to imagine that this is actually a shimmering image coming across your screen because, you know, obviously I'm really good at editing videos <laughs> and not actually just a printed piece of paper. Now I'd like to talk about modality. The zodiac, the 12 signs of the zodiac are also divided into three sections, cardinal, fixed and mutable. Now there is a cardinal fire sign, a cardinal air sign, etc, etc. There's a fixed fire sign, fixed air sign, etc, etc. And the, and it's, yeah, I think the easiest way to think about it, I have another visual aid here, isn't that lovely? I also have an amazing pen. <laughs> Now we're going to think about uh, seasons. So the first sign of the zodiac, Aries, marks the beginning of spring. So you've got spring over here. And then of course following spring is summer. Now if you're in the southern hemisphere you're going to be like, yeah mate, g'day mate, it's all wrong. So I don't know, it might help if you uh, watch this video back on your head or upside down, it might make more sense that way, I don't know. Of course if you're in North America you're going to think what does autumn mean? Fall, obviously. So yeah, we're talking about modality. The first sign of every season is the cardinal sign. Now, the cardinal signs are, are the ones that, that take action, that do things. They that they like starting things. Maybe not very good at finishing things, but they like starting things. So that's the cardinal signs. A little bit of reference up here for you. Of course you can't see that. There you go. Yeah. I should just give up with that really, shouldn't I? There you go. Cardinal, fix, mutable. Now the fixed signs, now cardinal kind of means first. It means let's go. So they're always the first in the season. The fixed signs are the ones in the middle, and that's quite easy to imagine because they're buried in the seasons. The fixed signs, <clears throat> excuse me, are Taurus, Leo, Scorpio, and Aquarius. Now the fixed signs are quite stubborn. They don't like change, but they're very good at building things, at grounding themselves. And it's quite easy to remember the fixed sign is right in the middle of the season, if you like. Finally, you have the mutable signs, um, and they're mutable. Mutable obviously means um, just like it's like Play-Doh. You can you can change it. They're very changeable. They're good at change. They're good at adaptation. Um, they're good at rolling with the punches, uh, that sort of thing. And it's probably because they're at the end of the season and they're getting and you know the sun's getting ready to go into the next season. The mutable signs are Gemini, Virgo, Sagittarius, and Pisces. Now. This is going to become a lot more important once we come onto the separate videos um, and you're going to see how the relationships and all these links because already we've divided the Zodiac into four, into four twice in fact, uh, we've divided it into 12. You could also halve it uh, with a polarity thing but we're not actually going to touch on that at this point. Um, so yeah, and you're gonna you're gonna have all these sort of different ways. You can be a fire sign and you can be fixed. You can be an air sign and you can be mutable. Um, you can have different planets in different places. So that's how astrology can get really really complicated. But this, I'm just trying to get you used to get you used to the, some of the language. So that's modality: cardinal, beginning, fixed, in the middle, mutable, nice and changing. Uh, the other thing I want to, the other word, if you like. 
uh, decans. So, I'll bring back this bit of paper now. I'm gonna be able to do this. One day I'm gonna be able to edit these videos and it's gonna be so awesome, but not today. Let's show you this one instead. So, here is a circle. Now, I hope um, you're familiar with the concept. Um, as you may remember from your secondary, your primary, your school, <laughs> your school mass, that there are 360 degrees in a circle. So when you're talking about 90 degrees, we're talking about a right angle. When we're talking about 180 degrees, it's like straight line opposite, if you like. Um, now, we've already talked about the aces, which represent the whole of their alchemical elements. For example, the ace of cups is going to represent all of the water signs. So if you take the aces away and you take the major arcana away and I'll mention the court cards briefly in a bit, you're left with the numbered cards, the cards numbered between two and 10 in the four suits. Four times nine is 36. Now we've got 360 degrees and it's all very, very handy. And this is how it all kind of links in really well. If we assign one card to 10 degrees of the circle of the zodiac, then all 36 numbered pip cards will have their own bit. Now this, again, will become very, very apparent once I go into the particular videos. However, if you wanted me to just, let's have a look over here. Let's have a look at Leo down here. Leo, the fixed sign in the summer, it's a fire sign. You can see the three lines here. Now when we say naught degrees Leo, which will be there, Nought degrees to 10 degrees, this is one decan. 10 degrees. And that will be assigned a card. And that card is indeed the five of wands. And every card is, is, is kind of linked. Now, basically, all the fire ones, so this is going to be the two, three, four of wands, five, six, seven of wands, eight, nine, ten of wands up here in Sagittarius. It is a very, very neat system. And they're called decans. Now, it's, it's kind of cool. Um, you can pick, pick out your birthday and, and choose your card and, you know, bond with that card in whatever way you'd like to. Um, my card's pretty good. There are cards out there that I possibly wouldn't want to be associated with, but, um, well, we don't get to choose when we're born, really, do we? So that's decans. Now, if you look at the word decan, you can see uh, DEC, like decade for example, it means 10, 10 degrees. So when, when I talk about the decan, it's 10 degrees of the zodiac, there are 36 decans. Okay, that's pretty cool, that's pretty cool. Now what I want to talk about now, let's talk about planets. So in the ye olden days, when, um, well, actually mathematicians have often suspected that Earth was at the middle of the solar system, um, but we could observe the fast moving planets in the sky. Now, the reason why I mention that is uh, the classical model of the planets does include the sun and the moon. Now, please, please don't leave any comments saying, well, actually the sun and the moon are not planets. What are you talking about? Um, I do know this. I do have a physics degree and uh, the very thing that I learned from that physics degree is the sun is in fact a star and the moon is in fact a moon, so thank you. However, the seven classical planets are the sun, the moon, Mercury, look at Mercury there, looking very mysterious, Venus, Mars, as you can see, between Venus and Mars you get Earth, but obviously we're standing on Earth. This is where we are. Jupiter, I love this card, look at that. And finally Saturn. So they're the seven classical planets and they are attributed to each sign of the zodiac and it's again it's a very clever neat system. If we look down here um, at the height of summer Leo is represented by the Sun. Cancer a nice water sign and if you think about the if you think about the the Waitsmith image of the moon um, you have that crayfish which is related to a crab at the bottom there. And already, already you've got another association between tarot and astrology. However, the, the, yeah, so Cancer water sign is associated with the moon. Then going around this way, the planets each have two signs. So Mercury over here has Gemini and Virgo. Uh, Venus has a Taurus and Libra. 
Mars takes Aries and Scorpio. Over here you've got Pisces and Sagittarius with Jupiter. And finally Capricorn and Aquarius are ruled by Saturn. That's the classical method, if you like. Now, since, since the age of antiquity, we have discovered more planets. And two more planets, in fact, although at one point it was three. And those are Pluto, the, the planet that is no longer a planet, and rightly so, it's, it's just it's a Cooper Belt object, if you really want to know. And Pluto has been assigned to Scorpio over here. Now, there is a lot of, as with anything, there's a lot of debate, there's um, a little bit of argument. Um, it's, it's kind of mutable, to be honest. You know, some people still associate Scorpio with Mars, some people like to plop it onto Pluto. Over here, Pisces. Fishes swim in the sea, so that is um, associated with Neptune and Aquarius with Uranus. Now, that is a, again, that is quite a modern. I mean, I'm trying to think when I think I think Neptune was discovered in the mid 70s, 1700s, I think, and Uranus. I, I think Uranus was discovered like a century later in the 1800s, and Pluto like 1930s, I think, like 26 or something. So it's all very, very new. So, but then again, you know, the, so is the the modern tarot system, if you like. But anyway, the planets are assigned to their signs, and the planets are also assigned to one of the major arcana. The signs of the zodiac are also assigned to one of the major arcana. It's very, very clever. Now, the mathematicians amongst you will go, OK, so there are seven classical planets, and there are 12 signs of the zodiac. Um, that adds up to 19, but there are 22 cards in the major arcana. Well, I would say to you, you are very, very clever. And let's actually look at some tarot cards, shall we? So those those final cards. Now, I'm not going to tell you what all the attributes are now, because that's the whole point of the actual videos that I'm going to show you. That's the whole point of the Virgo video and the Scorpio video. But the three cards that don't have an uh, attribute, if you like, are the Fool, the Hangman and Judgment. Now, previously, before we decided to throw Pluto, Neptune and Uranus at these cards, they were um, associated with alchemical elements. Now, where have they gone? OK, so let me see if I can remember this. I know that Judgment was originally associated with fire. Let's make this look pretty. The Fool was originally associated with air. And finally, the Hangman with earth. No, I'm lying. Whoa, the hangman with water. <laughs> what a pro. What a pro I am. The, what I was thinking about saying there is, ah, oh, but you know, you've got one alchemical element left over. And I think there's a really neat way of explaining why. These, the fire, air and water, or indeed, you know, the, the, the cups, the wands and the swords, they're all associated with things that are either in your heart or in your mind. You know, their, their modes of thought, their ways you behave, um, the things in your heart, the things you want, things you desire, things that happen to you. And and again, you know, these, the, the planets that are associated with these, I'll come on to those again, they're all very ethereal. Whereas Earth relates to, you know, tangible things, things that are actually real, that you can touch, break, get wet, make muddy etc etc and I think that's a really nice way of explaining it because earth is really represented by the whole of the major arcana in the way or indeed by the by the, the querent the client the reader that's that's the earth element of tarot uh, I don't I can't remember where I read that but I really liked it I really liked it so yeah going back to these uh these weird cards that don't have a traditional planetary or astrological association these are the, these were what were given to them originally However, um, as with the extra planets given extra signs over here, do you know, I should write a book or a PDF or something so you've got all this information to hand, whatever. <laughs> so uh, the full um, is air and that is uh, Uranus. Ooh, throwing my cards around. As you can see here, Uranus does look kind of airy. Um, fire would be a Pluto, which is an association that I don't get because Pluto is very far away, very cold. Um, there is that uh, Pluto is the, the the ruler of the underworld, 
and in Christian mythology the underworld is fiery and hellish. I don't know, maybe I'm clutching at some straws there. The Hangman and Water, uh, Neptune, which is an obvious association really, isn't it? Now personally, I prefer the alchemical associations. But I'm just showing you these anyway because I'm just, just trying to demonstrate to you the division of the of the astrological year, if you like. So just to recap, um, the, the zodiac is divided into four, as are the, the suits of the minor arcana. Fire, wands, pentacles, earth, cups, water, swords, air. Um, the, uh, the zodiac is also divided into 12, and there are three signs into each alchemical element. The uh, zodiac year is also divided into 36, 10 degrees each, a decan, and that means all the numbered cards are associated to 10 degrees, adding up to the whole circle, fortunately. That leaves the court cards. There are 16 court cards. Now, the court cards are a little more complicated. And, of course, when I say court cards, I mean the Queen of Cups. You know what I mean. The, the, the knight or the knave, the page or the princess, the queen, the king or the knight. And there are 16 of them. Now, that's a little more of a messy system, so I'm not going to even talk about it anymore now. I'm going to leave that for the actual videos. But they're, they're mostly associated with two, three, or four decans. So you'll, you'll, get, you'll get most signs that will have a, a major arcana associated with it. Most signs will have a planet associated with it, which will also be um, attached to the, to the major arcana. Um, you will have one of the pip cards associated, or at least three pip cards associated with each sign, and also two, one or two of the court cards. And that's what I'm going to show you in these videos. It's going to be really exciting. It's going to be better than this video, because there's so much information. I'm just wondering how long I've been going home for. 32 minutes! I'm so sorry. You've either gone deaf, blind, or you're asleep, so I do apologise. Um, finally, the only thing I really wanted to say at this point, let me just tidy this up, is is how I'm going to be doing this. What props I'm going to be using. I'm going to be using Pixie um, for showing you the, the how they got to the, the, the picture picture cards and a lot of this is going to be about the pip cards i think the major arcana is very easy um for example the empress is clearly um associated with venus because you have the sign of venus let's let's find the hierophant the hierophant is associated with taurus but oh, there's the empress how handy the empress is obvious i mean look at her she is she is fem she's the archetypal feminine mother um Venus is there in, in a heart. It's 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 almost obvious. Um, so yeah, when I'm when I'm going to be talking about the the Empress and all the decans associated with her and the planets and which sign of the zodiac she's associated associated to, it's going to be really really interesting. So yeah, I'm going to be using Pixie for that reason. Um, I'm also going to be using Cassandra. Say hi, Cassandra. Okay, Ace of Pentacles or indeed Earth. Thanks, Cassandra. The reason why I'm using Cassandra is she does use imagery that is loosely based on the Waitsmith, but it's also quite different. For example, there is the Two of Wands. Now, the, the Two of Wands is, a, and the other reason why I'm using it is it makes it so easy for me. We've got Mars up here in Aries. So we've got the planetary and the astrological associations just on the card there, which is amazing thank you <laughs> thank you cassandra in fact i've got a lot of ones here so yeah i'm going to be using cassandra and i'm also going to be using one or two of the hermetic decks either equinox my top deck uh, there's that two of pentacles again second time has come up now the, the interesting thing about this is the imagery is in there so you have jupiter and capricorn down there and the imagery is incorporated Sorry, the symbolism is incorporated in the image in a rather clever way. I like it. I will also either be, yeah, I'll be either be using the top deck or the Hermetic Tarot. This is Jeff, good old Jeff. And again, this gives it the the Golden Dawn title. So here we have the Ten of Swords, Lord of Ruin, which is there's Gemini and there's the Sun, Sun in Gemini, and we'll explore why you get to that. 
Um, I will also be using the aforementioned astrological called Dice, which are amazing. Moon and Cancer. <laughs> and just to set the vibe, I'm going to be using these as well. These are these little packs that are from a shop in the west of Glasgow called Opal Moon. Um, they are awesome. It is like my favourite 4x4 four four metre space in the whole of Glasgow. they got loads of great stuff there and the staff that work there are lovely, knowledgeable and lovely. So just to be set in the vine, we'll be burning incense. Sadly, you can't smell the incense, but you can appreciate the nice birthstones that are associated with whatever zodiac sign I'll be doing. And that's pretty much it. Thank you for... Again, I'm sorry, you must be so bored, but hopefully you've either learned something or you understand what I'm going to be trying to do with these next 12 videos, which will be much shorter. I can't imagine there'll be more than 15 minutes each. But in the meantime, thank you very much. I'm going to go and drink some water and maybe even have a sandwich. Thank you very much, Hidden Hermit.